Hi everybody, Fide Master Dennis Monacrucis here, and we conclude, yes, our series on the uh, the Rui Lopez. The quick Rui Lopez series uh, has reached episode 34, and this is the final episode of the series. We're going to cover the Briar defense, or the Briar variation, or Briar system, however you want to think about it. Um, and it arises after the following move. So we've been looking at this for a few weeks now. I think this is our fourth week on the uh, the uber main line, the uh, the ultra main line of the closed Ray Lopez, and now knight to b8. So that's the Briar Briar's move there. And the idea of this is simply to reroute the knight to d7. Black will bring the bishop to b7. You usually play c5, and kind of wait for their developments from there. Now um, Black does not always play c5, so it's um, you know, he can, but there are plenty of variations where he doesn't, as we'll see. So it's more just to fix the minor pieces. The knight goes to d7, the bishop goes to b7. And generally black will play rook e8 and bishop f8 and often g6 on the king side. Beyond that, of course, it depends on what white does. Now, as usual, we're going to look at d3 first, and then we'll turn our attention to d4. So on d3, the funny thing about d3 is that this move is going to gain a tempo. Now that seems really bizarre. How could d3 gain a tempo compared to d4? You'll see. Knight b to d7, knight b to d2, the bishop does its thing, and now knight c5. So it's uh, it's kind of interesting that, that black does this. If the pawn were already on um, d4, so let's go back there, so d4, knight here, knight here, bishop b7, bishop c2, well, okay, sorry, um, yeah, here, Knight f1 would be the move that black white would like to play, but of course he can't, because it would hang the e4 pawn. So he brings his bishop back to c2, typically, and away we go from there. All right, so back we go to d3. So it's covered. And so the question is, well, what is black going to do at this point? Um, he doesn't usually want to play h6 in the briar. Generally, I mean, g6 is quite standard, but h6 is, um, is not. So... Um, you know, g6 is not working here, though, because of bishop h6, followed maybe by knight to g5. Actually, I'd have to think about that some more, if that works. Maybe black will simply have d5, but it's at least looking dangerous. There might also be some bishop f7, king f7, knight e6 ideas. Uh, again, I'm not sure I believe it, but maybe it needs to be examined. Or, yeah, well, it needs to be, be looked at, but it's at least very risky at this point. So black generally plays knight to c5. Maybe only plays knight to c5. Let me see. No, rook e8 is played sometimes, but it, it has a poor uh, poor score, as does h6. As does, for that matter, c5. Okay, so knight c5, bishop c2, rook e8, and now, all right, there's there's a choice um, from here. Um, knight to e3, we'll, we'll look at uh, in a moment, but first I wanted to just point out. So knight to g3, bishop f8. And let's say b4, knight c to d7, and d4. And this is the position that I had in mind when I said that um, white actually gains a tempo with the move d3. And the reason is that he lost a move getting the pawn to d4, that's true, but black played the knight from d7 to c5, and then it went back to d7. White, therefore, got a free move, and that's b4. But then the question is, is this a useful free move? Now, there are many... Um, places in the Briar system where white wants to play before, where this is just terrific. But here, it looks like it's it's maybe not so clear. Uh, black has a few decent moves here. Uh, g6 is the most common choice, but a5 is also um, pretty common. And uh, it's recommended by, by Kaufman in his um, book, something like the, uh, the Kaufman Repertoire for black and white, or for white and black. I think it's, depending on which way you orient the book, uh, it has both titles. Anyway, um, he has, a again, a, a fairly, well, I don't want to say thorough. He's got a, a longish section on the briar. It's his main system uh, that he recommends with black against e4. But he tries to do so much in that book that it's really very, very sketchy in many places. So it's, it's not bad. It's, it's a decent starting point, but it's, it's really not uh, deep enough for you to, uh, to just stop with that book, for you to make that your your uh, one-stop shopping trip. Now, at some point in the uh, the near future, I, I haven't checked the site in a while, but uh, Boris Avruk is um, 
writing one or two volumes on the briar for them in that Grandmaster Repertoire series. So if you want detail, that'll give you all the detail you can stand, I, I'm sure, and then some. Uh, anyway, the briar system is doing very well, and uh, well, well, we'll have a look uh, clearly in this in this video. Uh, obviously, I can't show you everything, but between what I've gleaned from Kaufman, uh, Bolligan from his um, series defending the white side of this, uh, of course, using my engine, checking uh, chess pub, uh, chesspublishing.com, which is uh, generally by Michalevsky, good, strong grandmaster, and, uh, of course, using my engine as well. And I think I checked a couple of other sources that weren't as helpful. So uh, I've, I've tried to do my, my, uh, my due diligence here in terms of uh, preparing preparing this, uh, this this lecture. All right, anyway, after A5, uh, Kaufman just gives something like A3, A, B, C, B, C5, takes, takes, with uh, an equal position. In fact, maybe black is even a shade better here. This occurred in a 1964 game between Evgeny Vasyukov and Yuri Averbach. Um, I believe Vasyukov won that game, but yeah, again, the position is fine for, for black. Uh, interestingly, these, I think, are maybe two of the oldest grandmasters still alive. I think Averbach is the oldest living grandmaster, and Vasyukov is, is certainly up there. I mean, he's, I think, pushing 80, if he's not there already. At any rate, uh, I don't think A3 is a very good move, though. Since he can't play AB anyway, uh, and he'd like to play A4 in, in many circumstances. So A3 is playable, but Rook to B1 is actually uh, an interesting try, intending to meet AB with Rook takes B4 and uh, hoping to use some pressure on the B-file. So uh, I don't think A3 is necessarily the, uh, the be-all and end-all there. So let's just give this as interesting. Okay, so let's go back, though. So I just wanted to show how the, uh, the tempo game took place. From here, there are a couple of other moves that White has tried. Uh, Knight F5 looks nice, but the problem is that uh, the Knight doesn't really have enough uh, doesn't have any partners out there. So after d5, ed, queen d5, bishop g5, uh, okay, e4 has been played in all three games where this ar arose, uh, in including games played by, by Tal and Mosesian on the white side. But uh, Kaufman prefers queen c6, protecting the uh, the knight on f6, and he even prefers black due to the superior light squared bishop, and he's probably right about that. It's I, I don't think that white is really well... Uh, well arrayed to uh, to create something on the king side. I mean, the knight on f3 is pinned. Well, it can't go to, let's say, h2 to go to g4 because of the mate. It could go to h4, but it doesn't really achieve all that much there. So black is all right. He'll follow up perhaps with rook a to d8, e4, and so on. All right, so knight f5 is nothing special. Uh, knight h2 could be played with the idea of f4. But um, black just swaps, plays knight e6, and c5. And we'll see this kind of uh, Benoni-ish. Th this is a little bit less Benoni-like than some of the structures we'll see, but uh, still vaguely reminiscent of it. Anyway, black is, is fine here, too. But a move that Kaufman doesn't mention that is, I think, pretty interesting is knight to e3. And this is a, a pretty significant move, too. And it's scored well. It's been used by such strong players as... Uh, as Gula Sachs, uh, Alexander Matanovich, or Matanovic, uh, Hans Ray, Larry Evans, Vasyukov again, and Tall again. Um, so here, for instance, bishop f8, b4, knight c to d7, and bishop to b3. And in general, I like uh, the knight being on e3 in these d3 variations because, again, you have, um, I think, more, more ways to play for the control of the d5 square. Of course, black still has the option of playing c6, so it's it's uh, too soon to just, you know, dive in with one of those plans where you put a knight on g4, play bishop g5, swap everything, and, and conquer d5 forever. But but still, I think white white has some chances here. Uh, Vasyukov, Razuvayev went uh, h6, and um, I think that uh, still, well, okay, I was going to say, sorry, uh, small ECO, which I've, I've mentioned before as a source, thinks that the position is equal or claims that it's equal. Uh, I still think white has chances for an edge here. So, if you play d3, if you want to play d3 and ignore or avoid all of this heavy theory, I would suggest playing knight to e3 here. It may not give you a, uh, an advantage, but I don't think, I, I'm not sure that anything in the briar gives an advantage. I will say this, though. The, the, the play in the briar is really so rich that it would be a pity to just play d3. So even if you like d3 and want to kind of major in it, 
there's really a lot that's very, very interesting about the Briar. And even if you just do it in speed chest, even if you just play it in Blitz, uh, try the main systems. I mean, there's really a lot to uh, to try out there. I, I've generally been playing um, sidelines against the Briar. I'll show you one in particular. Uh, so D4, back to, well, we're at the main line now, Knight B to D7. And then here instead of Knight B to D2, uh, generally I've played C4 against the Briar, but uh, I won't anymore. Um, not because it's not terribly promising, which is also true, but again, just because there's so many really um, fascinating positions that arise in the main line that I, I want to try them out. I want to understand them better and, um, you know, just, just see what I can do there. For the moment, at least, black seems to be all right, but, uh, but again, there, there's so much going on that anyone can also go astray, too. Okay, well, let's see what happens on C4. So this is an important sideline that has been used by some, some great players, uh, both in the past and in recent years. Spassky, for instance, uh, used to try this from time to time. And Spassky, I, I should say, uh, it's a previous generation, of course, but from the 60s through the 90s, Spassky was really one of the great exponents of the closed Gray Lopez, mainly with black, but with white as well. So uh, I, I would certainly recommend having a look at his games in, in the, uh, the Ruy Lopez. Uh, you could definitely do much, much worse than that. And, and that will, you know, even, if, even when the, the variations he played are no longer current or no longer state-of-the-art theory, and of course there are, there are always refinements, still there's so much that you can learn from it as, as background information, if nothing else, that it's worth your time to, to look from that point of view as well. Okay, so anyway, C4, C6, and now the idea, or one of the ideas behind C4 is to play C5. So black, or white is trying to undermine black's uh, central pawn structure. And there's similar things that can be done in the King's Indian uh, as well, which is probably where that came from. Anyway, from here, black should not take on D4 and should not take on C5, but ought to, to strengthen his center with Queen C7. So takes, takes, Bishop G5, and um, here Kaufman just gives Bishop to B7 and you know, wipes his hands and, and calls it a day, just says this is equal. Well, maybe, but um, I think you need to do some more work on this. Uh, the main line, which is also, I think, quite good, and this is what I've generally seen in my own games, is e takes d4, bishop f6, gf, knight d4, and then knight to c5. Now, some of you may be scandalized by the thought of voluntarily accepting such a pawn structure with black here, it uh, looks absolutely disgusting. I mean, your king is over there, only one minor piece has been exchanged, and, uh, you know, it's just wide open. But it's not that easy for white to really get over there in a meaningful way. There's no dark squared bishop any longer, and um, and the knights aren't really in, in a striking position. The knight on d4, okay, it hits f5, but can be exchanged away, while the other knight is, is many moves from... from achieving anything meaningful at all. So uh, black seems to be okay here, and has scored pretty well in this position. All right, so c5 is maybe a little bit too direct, although, again, I'm not sure that anything else works out so magnificently. All right, on cb, uh, Kaufman, again, just is very quick. He just says, uh, sorry, says cb and then b4 equal. Well, again, maybe, maybe not, but that doesn't really tell you how to play the position. Uh, and I should say, um, the Bulligan DVD series on the uh, on the Rui from Chess Base, um, you know, there, there are places where I argue with what he has to say, too. I did last week. I, I will this time as well. But even though um, he is, is advocating for the, for the white side, I learned a lot more about how to play the black side than I did um, from, from Kaufman's book. So... Um, you know, it's it's not, and that's not again intended as a, a slam on on Coffin's book. I think it's 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 a nice, um, you know, it's it's a very nice one volume repertoire with everything, but with a rich system like this, you, you just can't uh, really delve deeply enough. The other thing is that I, I I simply you know it's you know it's just the case that Bulligan is a much stronger player, and uh, perhaps one also a little bit less influenced by by computers than, than Kaufman is. So I think that, too, um, helps in the presentation. I mean, Kaufman is, uh, is, is a real computer specialist. I mean, he was the, uh, the opening book writer for Ribka for, for a number of years, 
and now does the same thing for for Komodo, another another very strong chess engine. And, and so I think he kind of uh, you know he's he's happy to just point out, okay, this works, so go and play it. Uh, but you know I think Bolligan in part, well, Kaufman's older, but again he's kind of become a computer guy. Certainly Bolligan knows how to use his engines, but he was very much a product of this uh, this old Soviet system. And his trainer in particular, this guy, uh, you know, you've heard of from the Chebanenko variation, Chebanenko, uh, was very much a, a schemes player. So, uh, in other words, he would give you, okay, here's this opening, and here, you want to put this here, that there, that there, that there, and the plans are X, Y, and Z. And that's very, very helpful to someone who's trying to learn an opening. And, and so, again, that I think is um, another way of really, uh, or, or another aspect of, of his um, his videos that I think make them quite worthwhile. Anyway, um, so uh, he doesn't recommend MC4, so I'm not giving you that there. I'm just pointing out that, that some of Kaufman's quick responses are not always that helpful. Anyway, A takes B5 is both more common, and I think it's it's at least as good, really. Uh, another point I want to make, too, not so much, uh, it's not that, again, Bulligan mentions this variation, but it's kind of interesting, the A takes B5 versus C takes B5 issue. Um, in some variations, one move seems to be prepared over the other. Bolligan expresses kind of a, a general dislike for C takes B5. So I, I think his view is that this is guilty until proven innocent. All right. You know, you always have to be careful about these overgeneralizations, but those kinds of rules of thumb can be can be very helpful. And again, given Bolligan's strength, um, I would say it's worth worth at least keeping that keeping that in mind. But there are, of course, many great players. Uh, Carlson included, who sometimes plays CB. It depends on the position. All right, so anyway, AB, knight C3, and here I think black is at least equal after either bishop to B7 or B4. So CB is not dangerous either. Uh, the main, or the more common idea is to put the knight on C3. But here it's premature. B4, knight A4, C5, and whether white takes on C5 or pushes past, uh, black is going to have the easier game thanks to the stupid knight on a4. I mean, if the knight were someplace intelligent, someplace reasonable, uh, you know, if you put it on e3, for instance, or even back on f1, then white probably stands better. You know, or let's say you play dc, dc, and then you could magically play knight f1 or knight e3. Well, then great. Uh, white has some chances there, but uh, here it's going to take white a long time to bring the knight back into play. And, and worse, too, if the white bishop could go to a4, it would be pre pretty decently placed. But to get the knight back into the game, you've got to play b3. To play b3, you've got to retreat the bishop to c2. And then once you play b3, well, the bishop is stuck. So it can't, you know, it can't get into the game. So this is uh, really uncomfortable for white to play bishop c2, b3, knight b2, knight d3. And even there, the, the knight's not uh, so brilliant. All right. So um, I think this even happened in one of the... Uh, I know Carlson had black. I'm trying to remember if it was Anand. Carlson or Shirov Carlson, some some high level game, and again White of course got absolutely nothing here. All right, before we move on to uh, to a3 and then c and then knight c3, uh, I'll briefly mention also knight b to d2, which is playable. But then the obvious question is, well, why did White play c4? Generally, it's you know to put the knight on c3 behind the pawn. So here, bishop b7, bishop c2 takes, takes, g6, and again this c5 idea. Uh, you know, black's getting this, this backward d-pawn, but it's very safe. It's very difficult to see how white's going to uh, arrange any pressure against it. And uh, and, the and all of black's minor pieces, with the temporary exception of the dark square bishop, are going to be very well placed. So, for instance, something like this, and, and black seems to be equal. Again, decent pressure against e4, White's got pressure on the long diagonal too, but black will, will neutralize it with bishop f8, g7. So it's an interesting way to go. So the main move though is a3, preparing knight to c3. All right, now here, um, b takes c4 is the usual move, but uh, we'll stick to um, e takes d4 here. So ed, knight d4, and, and in, in, in um, in favor of e takes d4, two things. So not only Kaufman's recommendation, but uh, perhaps even more impressively, 
um, Nadezhda Kuznetsova, one of the two very young uh, but very talented uh, Russian sisters who I think both have the, the Grandmaster title now and have at least come close to 2600, although I think now they're in the low to mid 25s. Anyway, both very strong players. Uh, so uh, Nadezhda drew with Peter Svidler earlier this year in the, the Gibraltar Masters playing like this. So 95, um, and okay, then it went CB, AB, Bishop F4. Queen B6, um, Knight C3, Rook E8, um, and here yeah, Kaufman just gives Knight F3, Bishop F8 equals. Um, I assume he wrote this before the uh, before that game was um, was played. So anyway, the game went Rook C1, Bishop D7, Knight F5, takes takes, and now Knight C4, and uh, and Black was doing just fine here. Um, you know, ended up with a big liquidation sequence, and really, uh, Black just had no problems. So it looks as if, well, I would say, if you're going to play C4, C6, you could try C5. It's at least at least gives interesting positions, and I think uh, unless your opponent is, is pretty experienced, they'll be a bit unsure about it, how to handle this. So it's it's not a bad system to try. Uh, A3 is, I think, the the most principled attempt, but. Black should be fine there too, and in general fine against c4. Okay, one other thing I'll mention very briefly is knight h4. Um, the, the idea is to put the knight on f5 right away, but the problem is it goes there, but then it gets kicked back. There's pressure against e4. White is threatened by e takes d4 and then the capture. Maybe. Well, actually, we have to be careful because the bishop to d5 tricks, but maybe e d and the bishop b7. So white probably should just play f3, but then Okay, no big deal here, bishop b7, and then just g6, the knight goes back, and it's not really clear what in the world white has been up to. So knight h4 is just a move that should be disregarded. All right, so the real move, knight b to d2. This is the main way to go, bishop b7. Okay, sometimes white plays a4, but at, at, the, uh, at best, it's an inflexible approach because sometimes white plays a4, sometimes he doesn't. So let's wait and see. So bishop c2, rook e8, and now we've got two big moves here, very big moves. Knight f1 is the classical main line. We'll look at this first. But in, in recent years, a4 has become really, really just huge, a uh, very important system that we'll examine in some depth. But let's start with a quick look at the uh, the old move, knight f1. All right, black plays bishop f8. We know this, this tour, so white goes for the uh, knight's tour. And black does the uh, the bishop reorganization. All right. Um, sometimes white plays bishop g5 here against this. Uh, black generally plays h6 and g6, and it doesn't really seem all that terrifying. Um, Gashimov is the, uh, the specialist in this in this variation, but um, it really doesn't look too terrifying. Sometimes black will end up playing g5. Sometimes you'll put the bishop back on e7, uh, but Black should be okay. All right, so let's again stick to the main route. Knight to g3, g6, and now uh, another very major parting of the ways here with three moves to discuss. So there's b3, which is a move that was very, very big in the mid-2000s. The idea was to just play um, d5 and c4, and neutralize all of black's queenside play. So just to make this perfectly secure pawn chain from a2 to d5, and further protected by the pawn on e4, and um, and then just use the extra space to push black back. So that's line number one. Line number two is bishop to g5, which is the, uh, the classic move, and, well, there's also a4, which is uh, another important move, too. Okay, and, and we can really call this the, the absolute main line. The setup. All right, so let's start with b3, which is not the earliest of these historical choices, but again, in relatively recent years, this was thought to be tremendously worrisome. All right, um, two recent moves that I'll just mention, but not say much about, are a5 and c6. They're both covered in the latest New and Chess yearbook. Uh, a5 is a Kamsky specialty. One idea is to play b4 very quickly before White can set up his, his big train, uh, his big chain. Uh, the second idea is to play c6. Again, stopping the uh, the d5, c4 setup. Uh, this one is a, 
a move that's been popularized by the Indian Grandmaster Krishna and Sasakiran, and um, in the uh, the New Inches Yearbook Survey, the uh, the author Sunararahan Kadambi suggests the following as perhaps the most interesting: Bishop to G5, Bishop G7, Queen D2, Queen E7. It seems like an unusual move, but the idea is to bring the queen to F8 to to help uh, keep H6 under control and prevent White from building up. I mean. Let's say the queen goes to c7. Uh, there are kind of routine attacking ideas like bishop h6 followed by taking, queen g5, knight f5, and so on. So by having the queen on f8, we, we prevent any of these ideas um, from taking place. In part because you can, well, you stop the bishop exchange, and even if it even if it had occurred from here, uh, you can take take play queen f8, and then if queen g5 play h6, so white never gets time to really set up. Okay, so a4 queen f8. Bishop e3, switching back to the queen side. And now, again, this kind of uh, Benoni, Kingsinian ish plan. Well, here it's it's definitely a Benoni type setup uh, since the white pawn is on d5. Now, b4 in a Benoni can be an awful, awful, awful move, but here, white's knight is not going to get to c4 anytime soon. Certainly um, not the g3 knight. So. If a5, knight e5, takes, takes, rook a1, and knight to d7. Black has decent control of the uh, dark squares and is equal, according to uh, Sunararahan. And on rook a to c1, again, knight e5, and black should have decent counterplay here. All right, so those are both very interesting, but let's focus on bishop to g7, which is the main approach um, in this b3 setup. So d5, rook c8. The idea of this is to play c6 without allowing d takes c6 followed by queen takes d6. Black will recapture with the rook. All right, c4, c6. Uh, and here white generally tries two moves. Uh, there's bishop to e3 straight away, but there's also this kind of funny stutter step with bishop to d2. Uh, on bishop to e3 right away, black plays knight b6. So the idea of bishop to d2 is that if black plays knight to b6 here, white will play bishop to a5. So black plays a5 at this point, and now bishop to e3. Okay, black got a free move. What can he do with it? The answer is bishop to a6. Now, uh, the idea that white had, too, is that if knight to b6, well, then white can take on c6 and then take on b5. Um, at least if black plays rook takes, and if he plays bishop takes, well, then he's dropping the d6 pawn. So bishop a6 is best. Uh, and now... In the past, uh, white has played, well, in, in practice, I should say, white has played bishop to d3. And um, I think in three previous games, they all ended up as draws. Um, and once also, white played knight to d2. Now, um, bishop to d3 has a uh, pretty, pretty high pedigree, too. Uh, it was played by, by Cheparinov against uh, Mickey Adams and uh, also a couple of cor strong correspondence players. So that's, I think... The move worth checking out. Um, Kaufman ignores that and just gives dc, rook c6, cb, bishop b5, bishop d3, takes, takes, knight c5, takes, takes, rook a to d1, d5, and considers that black has some initiative here thanks to his extra central pawn. Maybe, that, that may or may, may not be right, but still, uh, I think those moves need to be, or the bishop to d3 line needs to be looked at much more carefully. All right, additionally, uh, bishop to e3, Kaufman stops here after knight to b6. That's all well and good, but this is, again, really a, a major, major system here. And, and there are games uh, here featuring players like Vishir Lagrav, Nakamura, Karyakin. I mean, this is uh, this is not a, you know, a, a place to, uh, to stop uh, a repertoire book. So, you know, it's tough to go on from here because there, there isn't really a consensus on what to do at this point. I mean, sometimes white plays rook to b1, which uh, is kind of a neat move because it's a neat way of dealing with the threat to c4. Black cannot take twice on c4 because his bishop on b7 hangs. And that's maybe the main move. Queen e2 has been played as well, but let's, uh, let's take a quick gander at rook to b1. So here black plays queen c7, protecting the bishop on, on, uh, on b7. So now there is again a threat to take on, on c4. And here, white chooses. Okay, bishop to d3 was played uh, at a, in a pretty high level game, and this makes a lot of sense, just shoring up 
all of the, uh, well, destroying up the whole structure here, the, the whole mountain. Uh, and so that game continued with, with CD, CD, and then this very nice P sacrifice with Knight B takes D5. So ED, um, E4, and okay, it's very complicated, but the game wound up um, as a draw eventually. So lots of sharp, uh, sharp things going on here. Knight E4, Knight E4, Bishop E4, and so on. All right. Rook e4. Um, alternatively, instead of allowing this uh, temporary piece sacrifice, white has generally played d takes c6, bishop c6, and now again there are choices. Uh, bishop takes b6 is um, a kind of a logical move, and this again goes back to the, uh, the kind of anti d5 approaches that we've mentioned before. So you get rid of that defender, and then you can swing the knight from f1 to e3 to d5 is one possible idea. Uh, White has also again played the stabilizing bishop to d3, as well as knight to d2. So that's that's another uh, move that's been tried. So you can see there are really uh, many different ways for this um, uh, variation to continue. And uh, so this is just giving you kind of a glimpse of what's out there. All right. So let us go back to... Um, yeah, so that was b3. Okay, so let's move on to the next variation. Second line is to play bishop to g5. All right, now the bishop's going to end up here in the, the a4 variation in general, too, but um, it's going to be set for doing it right away, waiting to see how black reacts, and uh, only then deciding. The problem with this, though, is that it may be slightly premature. So sometimes you get more information by making these little testing moves first. Sometimes it's the reverse, and here it seems to be the reverse. Reverse. The reason is this: um, White would like to play d5, uh, but he can't do it after h6. Or he, well, he wants to play d5 uh, with the bishop on e3, but he can't do it because here, if he plays bishop e3, then e takes d4, and there's a triple attack on the e4 pawn. So as a result, White has to play bishop to d2, and this isn't as good a square. So from here, uh, Kaufman suggests bishop to g7, um, and that's fine. Also fine is e takes d4, cd, and again, the c5 idea. After d5, knight b6, bishop a5, so here we see a bishop to a5 uh, idea in action. Knight f to d7, b3, bishop g7, rook c1, queen f6. And this was Fischer Spassky from the uh, 92 match, game 5. Fischer played rook to b1 here and eventually lost, although rook to b1 is uh, not at all a bad move, so that's fine. Uh, just to give an interesting idea, and this goes with the uh, the kind of Benoni motifs that are present in the position, and that's uh, going for, for e5. So h4 is kind of a, I think it's a, a decent preliminary move, aiming to play h5 and, and uh, weakening black's kingside. So h5 may be black's safest response, but now e5 takes a knight e4. If black plays queen and d8, then knight to d6 is good for white. Uh, white's better here. And if queen to e7, then d6, queen d8, b4, c4, and knight c5. And white certainly has has uh, compensation. I think black has to play bishop c6. Um, anyway, white has enough for the pawn. It's a very sharp position, and uh, certainly one that could be played with uh, quite entertaining, uh, with, with a lot of entertainment to be uh, looked forward to. So ed is possible, bishop g7. Kaufman's suggestion is possible, but I think it's better just not to play bishop to g5. So a4 is the way to go if you're going to head down this route. And there's almost 2,000 games with this in the database. So, I mean, there's a tremendous amount to, to know in, in this system. All right, well, the main move nowadays is c5. Well, the main move period is c5 from here. But bishop to g7 is also very important. Although I think white has some chances for an edge here. Bishop to d3 c6, and now bishop to g5. See, in, in the main line with um, c5, okay, you have this go on here, uh, or h6, but um, yeah, here, all right, there's no c5, so that's white's advantage in this setup. So knight here, bishop e3, knight d7, bishop f1, queen c7, and here we have uh, an important moment. Uh, White has to decide what he's going to do with his queenside pawns. I mean, he could play AB, he could play B3, he could play B4. He can simply sit and wait. 
And I think probably the best is to sit and wait. So my, my recommendation would be Rookie to D1, which was played by uh, by Hrachik and uh, Sutovsky, both both successfully. And it's just, again, kind of a nice waiting move. The thing with, with B4, if you play it here, black plays knight to B6, hitting the A4 pawn. Well, I can play A5, and uh, then knight to A4 would be bad. But playing A5 freezes up the queen side and, and takes away that, that whole wing from, from white. So I, I like this idea of waiting better with rookie to D1. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, I think white has some chances for, for an edge there. So I think C5 is a more reliable choice. So now D5, closing the center. Again, very typical when black has a bishop on B7 and has already played C5, so he can't undermine the D-pawn, then D5 is, is a pretty standard rejoinder. And black is going to have to spend some time bringing the bishop back to a, to a more useful diagonal. The only exception to that is sometimes black can play F5, but here, pretty clearly, that's uh, not likely to happen anytime soon. So C4, bishop G5, and here the main line is h6, bishop b3, knight c5, queen d2, h5, and so on. Now, the usual choice here is bishop to g5, but Kaufman uh, suggests that bishop takes c5 has been annoying lately. Um, and perhaps, uh, I don't know if it's just his, his, his own evaluative approach to, to the position or a combination of that and the computer and uh, praxis, but he doesn't like the, uh, the, the, the setup that black gets with white having a protect, protected past d5 pawn and uh, black's queenside majority being, being crippled due to the, uh, the doubled c pawns. So bear that in mind. It's at least uh, an interesting way for white to continue. So Kaufman suggests bishop to e7 here instead. Uh, and now queen to d2 is the most usual move, though, and this is not addressed by Kaufman. So that's, again... Uh, a running theme, he can't cover everything. So he, I think he has a lot of excellent suggestions, but there are also a lot of gaps. So, um, and again, because I think he presents kind of, a, a, generally speaking, a much more uh, specifics-oriented approach instead of giving kind of, you know, here's the, the, the plan in this system and that system and that system. Um, you know, it's not always clear what you ought to do. So queen e2 is what you have to worry about here. Uh, on bishop to e3, I think his his uh, response is quite sensible. He's going to play queen c7 with the idea of knight c5 without having to worry about um, bishop takes c5. All right, from here, knight h2 is possible. It's what he recommends. I would prefer rook to a3. Kind of a, a useful, again, a bit of a useful way to move. Rook to a3 is a pretty standard idea. Preparing plans like queen d2 and rook e to a1. And this is... Um, a useful idea in several respects. White is ready to open the A-file, but he can do it at the moment of his choosing. And furthermore, since black very often wants to bring this bishop from b7 to c8, he wants to make some kind of transfer like knight c5, bishop c8, bishop d7, etc. Well, whenever he does that, the rook on a8 is, is a bit loose. And of course, black can play rook a to b8, but then he's seeding the file. And, uh, of course, if you don't know the game, you should always check out um, Karpov Unziker from the Nice Olympiad in 1974, which is uh, a fantastic illustration of, of how White can really exploit the A-file to his advantage. Although, the strange thing is he, he gets this absolute domination of it, but doesn't end up using it, but it just ties Black up so badly that it wins the game. Anyway, um, A4 is certainly an important system. You should know it if you're going to play the Briar. And, uh, again, Kaufman gives some interesting ideas for both sides, but um, more research certainly needs to be done there. All righty, so let us look at the contemporary mainline. So if, if there weren't the contemporary system to, to examine as well, I would spend more time on that, but there's a lot to look at still with 13a4. So bishop f8, bishop to d3. So this is the contemporary mainline. White is going to put pressure on this pawn on b5, get black to play c6, and now choose what to do from here. All right, so uh, this this stereotypical knight store with knight f1, knight g3, and trying to build up some kind of kingside pressure, while maybe doubling rooks on the a file, that plan is, is a bit passe. All right, so 
let's discuss this position. What are, what are the plans from here? What black is usually going to do is play g6, and the idea of that is not so much to fianchetto. The fianchetto does happen fairly regularly, but the bigger idea is to play knight h5. From there, the knight will go to f4, but that's not the end of its journey. Very often, uh, black will end up bringing the knight to e6, often with e takes d4 thrown in first, and, um, and pressure the pawn on d4. So that's, that's one, one very important idea that black has at its disposal. White, on the other hand, wants to play, in many situations, b4. I guess I can do some, some drawing here. So uh, b4, and then from once that's played, uh, c4 is very often the case. And one idea is to play c5 sometimes. Um, another idea is to play knight to b3 and knight a5. And a lot of this depends on what black has done. So that, that of course, will be quite relevant. Generally, white has to play b3 first before playing b4. Uh, an immediate b4, you know, then then becomes a target to c5, a5 tricks. Uh, also d5, sometimes e takes d4, cd, and then d5. So white will often wait to play b4. Oops. White will often uh, wait before playing b4 to see if black plays bishop to g7 first. So if the bishop is on g7, well then there's no big deal about playing b4, uh, at least in terms of ed, cd, and then d5. So that's one of the little games that goes on. Um, again, black sometimes plays ed and c5, so a d5 is not the only approach. We've, we've already seen ed and c5 in some different positions, but here with the pawn on a4 and the bishop on d3, it's a bit tougher for black to achieve. Now, you could try to, to make that happen by playing queen to b6 first. However, that has drawbacks too. Sometimes white can, can um, meet ed, cd plans with a5 and then b4 clamping down on the queen side. So those are where a lot of the battles take place. Also, white sometimes decides, or has to decide, should he play d takes e5 before black plays e takes d4, and go for still another kind of fixed structure. So sometimes you'll see de, white playing b4, and playing c4 as well, um, aiming to play c5, grabbing space, and burying that bishop on b7. In fact, sometimes uh, he'll do that even as a pawn sacrifice. So it's as I said, an incredibly rich system. Uh, also, sometimes when white plays b3, black will play b takes a4, and then make some some different decisions about the pawn structure. So you can get at least four, five, six very different and uh, all quite interesting and complicated pawn structures in this uh, in this system. And this is just talking about what's going on with the pawns from the a through e files. Of course, play can also um, get mustered up over on the king king's wing as well. All right, so having said all this, let's let's kind of jump in and look at some variations. Uh, a minor line first. Well, minor only because uh, it can transpose. So the, the non-transpositional aspect is more minor. So queen c2, g6, and uh, here b3 will, will transpose to b3 lines. b3 instead of queen c2, that is. Um, Kaufman briefly mentions a, b, a, b, takes, takes, b4. And here, e, d, c, d, and queen a4. So this is kind of an unusual uh, variation, not not typical at all, not thematic, and uh, you know it may be perfectly okay for black, but it's not really in keeping with the usual uh, modus operandi. All right, knight f1 though, why not this? So you might, you know, if you play the system with black, you play the briar, you might find opponents who haven't really studied this perfectly well play knight f1, kind of treating this as if it were the uh, the old main line. But here, black has a nice tactical shot. Remember, the point of playing a4 and bishop to d3 was to prevent black from playing c5. But now with the knight on f1, black's got it. He can play c5. And this equalizes. So a, b, a, b, rook a8, queen a8, d takes e5, knight e5, bishop b5, bishop e4. This is to Paul of Carlson from uh, the blind, their blindfold game in Monte Carlo in 2011. And it just becomes one mass liquidation. It's just a draw. Rook e4, queen e4, bishop e8, knight f3, queen f3, queen e8, c4, and here they agree to a draw. So that's the problem with the knight's f1. You know, we might think, well, I, okay, I stopped c5, so now I can play in the in the classical fashion, swing my king over to the king side, 
uh, my knight over to the king side and try to build up, well, the bad news is c5 is coming anyway. All right, another minor move is b4. Uh, and here I think Carlson has found a good response to this. So knight to b6 is the main move in your databases, but that's only because it's the older move. So Carlson found a, a nice idea. He played rook to c8 after uh, a couple of games with knight to b6, I think, against Anand. And rook to c8 he played against Anand. Uh, in the London Chess Classic in uh, December of 2010. So there, um, Anand played AB, which is a little bit inaccurate, probably. I mean, the whole point of Rook C8 was to, to punish White for playing AB, because the Rook's already hitting the C3 pawn, and it's discouraging C4. So Bishop B2, and now D5 takes and takes, and Black is maybe even a touch better, uh, and in fact was clearly better very soon, but, but then blundered well, made, made some mistakes, and they got ground down in a long ending. But from a theoretical standpoint, this was great for black and, and very poor for white. So bishop to b2 is the better move, and um, this can transpose after knight b6, a, b, c, b, d5, to a game between Shirov and Carlson from Bill Bow in 2010, and that was fine for black as well. So this is better than better for white than Anand Carlson, and more interesting. I mean, White still has ideas with knight b3, knight a5, for example. But but Black seems to be doing fine. He can put his knight on a4, and um, and that's rather annoying for White too. So it seems like this is roughly equal, and it's occurred in some games since then, besides the Sheriff Carlson one too. So it might be worth a little bit of a, of a further uh, examination. But the main move here is b3. All right, now here. Um, there are two main moves, queen c7 and g6. Uh, Kaufman reports being unsure which of these two moves should be preferred. Bulligan, on the other hand, uh, sp specifically says that he thinks that g6 is the, the more accurate move. And the reason is that this is more or less essential to black's plans. While it's not entirely clear right away whether the queen should be on c7 or b6. Uh, and in fact, interestingly, um, the queen going to b6 is something that Bulligan and others like Michalevsky uh, seem to think can lead to a white advantage, but I may have improved on Black's play there. We'll, we'll see. Anyway, um, well, the point behind g6, by the way, is that Black wants to play knight h5, and the reason he wants to play knight h5 is to go to f4, and as I said, play ed and knight e6, and so on. But if you play knight h5 right away, then you, you walk into, uh, into knight takes e5. I think you do. Maybe maybe knight f4 could be interesting there. Knight d7, knight e1, knight f8. I don't know. Have to look at that. But but that at least uh, is is probably the the issue there. So g6 supports that as well as making bishop to g7 possible later on. All right. Well, let's start though with queen to c7. Okay. From here, um, Kaufman only gives I think queen c2. Rook a to c8, bishop b2, knight h5, bishop f1, knight f4, b4, and knight, knight b6. And knight b6, again, I, I mentioned it earlier in the uh, in the video, it's a pretty typical rejoinder. Not not an automatic one, but it's a, it's a typical idea when white is played b4. When the pawn is back on b3, there's nothing really for the knight to do on b6. But now, not so much c4, but a4 could in some cases be a pretty nice outpost for the knight. Additionally, it forces white to make a decision. He plays a, b, then c, b. Okay, most of the time, here certainly. Uh, c, b gives black a uh, very good play. I mean, the bishop on b7 exerts some pressure, and there's pressure on the c file and on the c pawn, especially after knight a4. Um, on the other hand, if white plays a5 instead of a, b, well then, it's foreclosing some of white's options and taking pressure off the b-pawn so that c5 by black can become more uh, more readily available to him. All right, but instead of queen c2, let's look at bishop to b2. Okay, so from here, um, well, this is uh, Bulligan's analysis, again, with some Mikulevsky, and of course some of my, mine in there, too. So first what we'll look at is d5, so a very straightforward approach here. And this was played in Spidler Carlson from the Tall Memorial back in 2006, when Carlson was only 2698. Anyway, takes, 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 knight f3, queen f4, 
And uh, here, Smidler played e takes d5, which let um, Carlson off the hook, and he, uh, he drew in about another nine moves. But the better move here is e5, according to uh, Bolligan. If the knight retreats, then black is doing poorly, and, um, and well, in fact, he's got to route bishop to c1, just trapping the queen. So knight e4 is perhaps forced, uh, so the queen has f5 as a flight square. But now after queen c2, um, looks like white's just clearly better. So the uh, the knight is, well, he's starting to win a pawn, and the knight can't retreat. Well, actually, maybe it can go to g5. Well, it can go to g5 without losing the queen, but then the h7 pawn drops. So black is in big trouble here. So uh, d5 is clearly not a good idea. Maybe this even merits a question mark. Okay, next up is rook a to c8. Uh, here, Bulligan likes a, b, and um, actually Bull, uh, Michalewski does too. In fact, this might be, yeah, this this may be more Michalewski than, than Bulligan. So a, b, well, and it, really what it is is Karyakin against Tomaszewski. So a, b here. Now, if a takes b5, queen c2, g6, and here b4 is pretty good. White has a, a comparatively favorable situation. Because here, knight to b6, I mean, again, the knight to b6, knight to a4 plan works better when black can play cb because then there's pressure against the c3 pawn. Here, white should just be doing very well. So there's the knight b3, a5 idea, there's potentially c4, with or without de5 thrown in first. All right, if cb, then again c4. And now if bc, bishop c4, and white's slightly better, the a6 pawn is bad. If ed, then cb5, this is the, the game. Bishop f1, takes, takes, rook e7, knight e4, knight fe4, knight e4. And uh, yeah, here Bulligan just continues with rook e4, b4, which is the game, and notes quite properly that white has uh, an initiative here. Um, at this point, black should have played knight to, knight to e6. Although, even here, white stands better thanks to his past pawn, the good bishops, and black's slightly vulnerable hanging pawns in the center. Uh, instead, um, Tomaszewski played queen to b6 and uh, just went down to some nice tactics. So queen g4, and here knight e6 would have been even better, but knight f5 was still quite good enough. Takes, takes, queen b5, bishop g7, rook b8, bishop c3, threatening queen f6, well, threatening queen g5, for that matter. So queen b6 stops both, queen g5, and now queen e5 hits the rook and threatens mate on h8, so black resigned. And this was from uh, Hansi Mansis, I guess it was by World Cup, uh, back in 2010. All right, so back to this position. Queen c7, bishop b2, g6 is probably best, and maybe even almost forced. Okay, so now queen c2, and now black's got some choices. All right, so knight h5 is the uh, the thematic move. Um, and here, white can play g3, he doesn't have to, but I should say about this g3 move that this is not really that fantastic, because while it stops knight to f4, A, knight to f4 wasn't such a big deal, and B, black can always play knight to g7 and go to e6 anyway, as long as the bishop isn't already on f8. So here it may, may indeed be worth considering knight to g7. Uh, Bulligan only gives bishop to g7 and concludes that white obtains an, an edge here. So just to give his, uh, so his analysis, knight b6, a, b. And here, okay, if c, b, then d, e, and then c4. And um, he likes white's position here. All right, so the knight, the, yeah, the pawn didn't get stuck on c3. So if the pawn had been stuck on c3, Black would be fine, but there were no rooks on c8, and um, so white is doing quite well here. If a, b instead, then takes, takes, and c4, and in this position, white is doing very well. He's threatening knight to g5 and queen b3. His, his b pawn is better than black c pawn. There's pressure against e5. So this is all very nice for, for white. But again, um, based on what we've seen and what we've, we've kind of learned here, Maybe bishop to g7 and knight to b6 are not the best ways for black to continue. All right, so instead of that, another move we can look at 
is rook a to c8. And uh, now we're going to follow a game, Cheparinov against Alexeyev, which I think is a, a model game for white. So a very nice game. And I won't really uh, you know, offer much by way of analysis of, of other options. It's just uh, a game that I wanted to quickly talk you through, again, because I think um, it's, it shows almost everything that white wants to accomplish, or many things that white wants to accomplish. So queen to b8, rook a to d1, bishop g7, g3, so again, keeping everything restricted, bishop a8, and now uh, white can finally spring into action here. So a, b, a, b, yeah, c, b, I mean, just doesn't look all that effective here. Uh, black's minor pieces are really not putting any pressure on white's position at all. So a, b, and now b4. Okay, so he does the clamp there, bishop f8, and this prepares ideas like e, d, followed by d5. So queen to b3 is quite useful. It gets the queen off of the C file where bad things could happen with the rook on C8. It hits F7, so there are knight to G5 ideas, and it also uh, protects the B4 pawn, so that way E, D, C, D, D5 won't be, uh, won't, won't be that effective. So H6, D takes E5, knight E5, and now C4. Again, a very typical idea. So pawn takes, knight takes. Okay, the queen covers both knights, covers the knight on F3, so no problems there. And again, we see the pawn on b4 is fairly effective as a restraining tool. And uh, white c and d, or black c and d pawns are a little bit loose. There's a lot of pressure against e5. The bishop on b2 looks very strong. White has more space. Just uh, everything is going his way. So knight f to d7. Knight f takes e5. Knight e5. Knight e5. D e5. And now rook to d7. Threatening queen f7. So rook e7. Rook e to d1, rook c to e8, and bishop c4. And guess what, folks? That's it for the f7 pawn. There's, there's no way to keep this uh, this poor little guy protected. So he at least tried getting out of the way. And um, here white decided to uh, ramp up the pressure in a new way, queen f3. All right, well, what to do here? Um, Alexei have tried c5, which looks pretty decent. It's... Uh, Hoping the bishop on a8's diagonal. Maybe he's hoping he can play bishop c6. Um, you know, of course, bc allows queen b2. But Cheparinov finishes in, in style here. Queen takes f7 check. Rook f7, rook f7. Okay, the king can't go to g8 because of the discoveries, so king h8. But now, rook d to d7, and black resigned. There's just uh, not really any good defense to the uh, the mate threat. For instance, if he plays, let's say, rook e7, then we just take, threatening mate again, bishop takes, rook takes, and now there's nothing to be done about queen, or bishop takes e5. So that is a disaster for black, and that's the kind of thing, or one of the, the kinds of ways in which white can hope to, to win in this system. All right, still another approach, Bishop to g7. So here, c4, b8, and now c5. And this is from uh, game Volokitin against Tazbir, from Karpox, or Karpach, I'm not sure how to say it, in 2008. And this is a, another standard idea. And in fact, this goes back to that c4 variation that we looked at at the beginning of the video. Similar idea, breaking up the, uh, the black pawn chain. So d5, de, de, bishop e4. A, B, knight B3, knight to D5. Uh, and the game ended up drawn, but that's because um, Volokitin made the wrong choice here. So Bulligan gives E6 as a, a strong idea. Rook E6 seems to be forced. Takes, takes. Knight B to D4, rook F6. And then trading, followed by rook to E7, gives white an absolutely dominating position. A huge advantage. Okay, so this gives, I think, a pretty good idea of what white is up to, and perhaps uh, a reason why, again, queen to c7 should not be played. So g6, I think, would be my recommendation instead of queen to c7. All right, so now from here we're going to look at three moves. Bishop to b2, bishop a3, and queen to c2. All right, so bishop to b2. Let's jump right in here. Now, I mentioned queen to b6. Well, let's have a look. Queen b6. And uh, this is a move that Spassky used to play, or uh, 
would play this in very similar positions that could transpose. Um, Kamsky's played it, and others too. All right, as I said, one of the big ideas of this is to be able to play the d5 pawn advance, especially in some variation after um, b4, e takes b4, c takes b4. So that way the b5 pawn is adequately protected. The uh, potential drawback is that white can gain some time to uh, close the queen side with a5 and then b4. Well, let's see. All right, queen c2, rook a to c8. Okay, on this, then c4, and white seems to be doing well. So, for instance, if bishop g7, this is helpful to white because now there's no no eye on the b4 square. So takes, takes, b4, and this structure in general seems to be very good for white. Black doesn't want to play bc because knight c4, and if queen takes b4, then bishop to a3 looks like just wins the queen. And even if it didn't, <laughs> knight to d6 would be crushing in its own right. Um, so if you can't play bc, well, then there's not much you're going to be able to do about c5, and that in turn gives a potential outpost on the d6 square while burying the bishop. All right. Um, another idea is ed, a better idea. Bishop d4, queen d8, takes, takes, and queen to b1, and white has some nice pressure here against b5, and the bishop on d4 is very good. Okay, so back to queen c2. Instead of this, um, knight to h5, so the, the typical move. And this is uh, this transposes to uh, Ivancho Kamsky from Amber, rapid, the, uh, the rapid game back in 2009. Uh, in that game, white played bishop to b2 first and queen to c2 second. Anyway, um, this plan that I've mentioned a million times now of playing ed, knight f4, knight e6, and so on, goes back to Yuri Balashov, uh, I think from at least a couple of decades ago. But it's a very good plan. It's a very important plan. All right. So, for instance, uh, Ivancha Kamsky went, I think, like this. Bishop f1, ed, cd, and now d5. And this looks really grotesque at first. I mean, what about the bishop on b7? But black is going to play um, c5. So here's the deal. Okay. White, if white plays e5, then, again, knight f4, knight e6, and then c5. So... It might be best for white to uh, not rush with with, uh, with e5, but to play something like queen to c3. So now if de then knight e4, and there are ideas like knight c5, and sometimes d5 in the air. Um, but, um, well, also b4 is interesting, but queen e3, c5, e5 here, knight g7, a5, and this, I believe, is a recommendation by Bulligan. He thinks white is doing pretty well here. Um, and then finally, knight f4. Okay, so a5. And here, um, now we're in Michalevsky and Houdini and, and me. And uh, actually, well, there's another game that's very important too. So I think Bulligan discusses this game too. All right, here, uh, Michalevsky likes queen c7. And the idea is again to play b4, given a chance. Uh, and one important point is that if white tries to play b4, which is a mistake, now black has d takes e4. Now, it didn't work in the similar position, but here, uh, it's okay. If um, d5, then f6, and yeah, this is the important point of why black should play queen c7 from here. So, uh, let, me, let me get back to this. So, queen d8 was, was played in uh, an important game. Dolmatov against Sochko from Kazan in 1997. And, uh, yeah, queen c7 is a nifty improvement, with the point being that, again, on b4, de, d5, f6, white would have d takes c6 if the queen were back on d8. But it's not there, so here d6 is the best white can do. But in this position, black is slightly better. He's up a pawn, has some pressure against b4, and although the diagonal matters, the a1, h8 diagonal matters, it's not enough for the material. All right, alternatively, there's knight e4, but then knight to d5, and the b-pawn is dropping, so black is clearly better. So queen c7 is, is a good idea, but queen d8 is actually all right, too, although it's very, very complicated. So after b4, um, Bulligan just stops here and says white's better. The engine says the same thing. Uh, the game continued, knight f6, e5, knight e4, and the game Dolmatov blundered with queen to b3. 
and you might want to take a minute and see if you can figure out why that's a blunder if you're not too exhausted from uh, from all of this analysis. It's a simple tactic. It's a, it's a three mover. So on queen b3, uh, Sochko played knight takes h3 check, g takes h3, knight takes d2, knight takes d2, and then queen g5 check, followed by queen takes d2. So that was the problem. But, of course, white can play queen e3. And I think, um, again, the engine, and I think Mikulevsky maybe say say this. Actually, I'm not sure if Mikulevsky um, commented on this. I think he just, yeah, I think he does somewhere give queen e3 is better, but again, it says queen c7 earlier was fine for black. But this isn't clear either. If you follow the variation out with your engine, it turns out to be really murky. Bishop h6, and now white should play knight takes e4, not fearing knight h3. Knight h3 is not good for black at all. Takes, takes, check, and then rook e3. Let's say rook e6, and now knight to, knight to e1. Black has a queen and a pawn for a bishop and two knights, but here the knights are fantastic. I mean, the one knight's on f6, the second knight is coming to c5, uh, black's bishop is horrible, his pieces are just sealed in here. So this is a huge advantage for white. This is terrible for black. So going back, black should not win the queen. Going back, black should not win the queen, but should play d takes e4, sacking a pawn instead. Queen e4, and now rook a7, threatening c5. White should retreat, and black should play c5 anyway. So this is really terrific. I mean, white would like to have played queen e3 to keep the knight on f3 protected against the c5 idea, but then, of course, knight h3 would just be winning. So he has to go back to a square like c2. c5 takes, takes, and I think it's just equal. Um, king h2 seems to be the best try here, and now king h3. But um, it's not so simple. So bishop c6, I think, is best. If g3 here, hoping to play king h2, bishop g2, and so on, well, queen d5, and white is waist deep in, in hot water. f3 is forced, but it's a bit weakening. So after bishop d7 check, and now f6, this might be about, about the best that white can do. But after bishop c6, um, or sorry, bishop e6, well, even bishop c6, because e6, bishop g7, everything is okay. So it looks like black is fine here. It's it's a murky position, but white's king is at least as exposed as black's. And uh, certainly white doesn't have any advantage here at all. So knight h5, then, I think is, is the way for, for black to play in this sub-variation. So queen of b6 uh, may, in fact, be all right. All right, next up, bishop to, to uh, g7. Now remember, this could be premature because it, it again takes the eye off of off of the b4 square. So now queen c2, rook c8, and um, here for instance, okay, well there are a few moves um, that we'll we'll look at. Rook a to d1 I'll just mention as a possibility. It was played in a couple of strong grandmaster games in 2011. It's definitely not bad. Um, a b I think is Bulligan's recommendation here. Um, so he suggests that, um, okay, yeah, here's where one of the places where he made his comments about not liking CB in general. Uh, here, D5, Knight H5, Bishop F1, Queen B6, and B4, and White has the advantage. And I, I think that's clearly right, but, but Black has not really arranged his forces very effectively at all. Um, White has both the idea of C4 and Knight B3 and Knight A5, and for that matter, after Knight B3 and A5, he could play C4. While Black has uh, nothing to do with the knight anymore on h5, and the bishop on f8 is not very, or bishop on g7 is not very good either. So that's not good. Uh, on a, b, d, e, d, e, and then b4, again with the idea of knight to b3, knight, knight a5, and so on, or sometimes knight to c5. Um, and black can't play c5 here because of the, uh, the weakness of the b5 pawn. So this is also a decent way to continue. Uh, bishop f1 is um, another option, and there's a game uh, between Tigran and Petrosian, the, uh, the younger, still living one, not the uh, late world champion, uh, against uh, Hyrulean from the uh, 2011 Aeroflot Open. And um, there, get a game continued, Queen C7. Uh, here, maybe DE is better, but uh, get the game continued, C4, BC. Okay, here, though, I think uh, ED equalizes. So I think this is enough for equality.
Okay, BC is the game, and now takes, takes, 95, and yeah, I think White has more than enough pressure for the pawn and eventually ground out a victory. Uh, in fact, right, my improvement was just to get to the same position, but in a more forceful way. So DE right away, and then C4, and then we're at the same spot. So my uh, verdict on bishop to g7 is that this is not really so great either. So queen to b6 is good, or it's decent. Bishop g7, maybe not so uh, not so good. And then there's ed, which I think is Kaufman's recommendation. So, um, but but here I think he's mistaken. So cd, d5, and then Kaufman just gives the following: um, knight e5, which was played in Nisipianu against Carlson um, from Medias in uh, 2011. And here Black is doing fine. But instead of knight e5, uh, looks better, as Mulligan suggests, to play a b. Well, this is following a game from earlier this year. It's not uh, not necessarily his invention. So a b, um, if c b, then e5, knight h5, knight f1, bishop b4, rook e2, knight f4, rook c2, f6, knight 1, h2, and the knight's ready to jump into g4. And I think white, white stands well. The queen side is under control. And he's got some kingside prospects, so should be a little bit better. All right. Instead, after a b, then a b. Rook a eight, bishop a eight, e five, knight h five. And here, Black has managed to get his knight to e six, but getting c five in is not going to be that simple. Queen d three, bishop b seven, h four, rook a eight, and now knight g five again. Uh, making c5 difficult to achieve, and uh, White was already taking over a little bit of an initiative. Was, was sorry, was already taking over the initiative here a bit at a time, and um, the comparison between White's extra space as long as c5 is impossible, and uh, the, bla the bad black bishop on b7 seems to give White a little pull. So this was uh, Ildiko model against uh, Kashlinskaya from Pox in 2011, and White uh, w went on to win. But in a long game, so uh, White's not anywhere close to winning at this point, but but has a slightly more comfortable position. So perhaps Queen B6, if my improvement, well, and also um, Mikhailovsky's improvement is correct, is um, very much worth considering. Okay, so that was Bishop B2. Another move is Bishop to A3, and this has been played a number of times by Anand. Uh, Kaufman doesn't cover this, so it's another it's a gap in his his uh, work. He does mention queen c2, rook c8, bishop a3, which can transpose, but um, typically doesn't. All right, so here black usually plays knight h5, bishop f1, knight f4, queen c2, and um, here we'll look at e takes d4, which turned out, I think, pretty well for white. Uh, I'll mention rook c8. This is an interesting alternative possibility uh, was played by Avruk back in 2009, and again, if Avruk plays it, it's worth worth considering. I mean, the guy's a great theoretician and uh, a Briar expert, although maybe those were early days for him with the Briar. They weren't that early, but anyway, it'll be interesting to see when his book comes out if he would still recommend that move. Um, at any rate, he takes d4, is played by Kamsky against Anand in uh, the rapid game from Nice in 2009. So it went cd, rook c8. And now here, if um, if g3, knight e6, it transposes to a position that, that Kaufman does discuss. But um, instead of that, rook a to d1 was played by Anand, queen b6, and now b4, preventing c5 and preparing the standard knight b3 a5 idea. And white went on to win in really quite convincing fashion. So he maybe missed a few way, few places where he could have won a little bit more speedily and uh, convincingly, but still it was a pretty solid and uh, thematic victory by, by the world champion. So queen a4, queen c7, queen a1. You can see that black, I mean, even though most of his minor pieces are, are kind of pointing in a good direction, um, white has better control over all the key squares. Okay, so Kamsky played rook to b8, and now d5, shutting down operations for the bishop on b7. Takes, takes, knight e to f8, queen c3, stopping cb, 
rook b1, and now b5. So this is great because uh, it also keeps black from playing cb, which means that the knight on d7 doesn't get the c5 square. So white is really in complete control at this point and went on to win. So just quickly, so you can see what happened. On on exchanges off the only active black piece here, keeps them in the box. Okay, and there goes another active black piece. All of black's pieces, remaining pieces, are stuck on the back rank. The d6 pawn is weak, the bishop on a8 is dead, and again, it's just a matter of white penetrating without goofing something up here. All right, so Kamsky tries g5, which is weakening. But the idea is to play knight to g6 and at least give one piece a good square to work with. Well, it doesn't work out. Oh, notice he couldn't play knight to d7 because bishop d7 and then queen takes a8. So g5, rook b3, and now rook to g3. So he switches, switches the uh, direction of the operation here. And all of a sudden, black's got problems on the king side. So he has to give up the pawn here to keep lines closed. Now rook f3. Queen a7, and now f7 is a target, and it's still a target, and white's up two pawns. Make it three pawns, and that was it. So there's no no uh, perpetual check or anything else uh, in the works. If knight f4, then rook g7, rook h7, and queen g7 is made. So black resigned. All right, so that's bishop a3. Finally, queen c2, and I don't have too much to say about this one. Um, Rook to c8. Okay, here, if bishop b2, Kaufman thinks that white can even stand better, or black can even stand better with knight h5, and the Balashov plan. Takes e5, b4, followed by knight g7, knight e6, and uh, c5. But I'll just point out that e5 is not forced here. So, um, you know, maybe the queen c3 idea is again feasible. There are options at this point. Okay, uh, finally bishop a3, ed, cd, knight h5. Uh, here, Kaufman gives just g3, knight g7, bishop f1, knight e6. Um, and um, this is likely to transpose to a pair of Shabalov Navarra games from Hansi Mansisk in 2009. Um, he prefers this move order because white had a chance in, in the way the game went to play d takes e5 and create a, a, a bit of a more uh, a less interesting position for black. But let me go back to here and point out again that g3 is, again, often neither particularly good nor necessary. As we saw, g3, it stops knight f4, but that's not really the issue. Black wants to just bring the knight to e6, and so knight g7, bishop f1, knight e6, I mean, white's essentially thrown away a tempo with, with g3, since he played bishop to f1 anyway. So from here, I would suggest playing bishop f1, and on knight f4, play queen to c3, rather than g3, knight e6, again transposing. But queen c3 may be followed by queen to e3. And, um, you know, the play is still interesting there. I don't know if white's better, but it's. Uh, I, I also can't say that black is equalized. Well, with that, we bring our very long series on the Rui Lopez to an end. And um, I hope that um, you guys will use this again in the future not just uh, watch it the one time, forget everything and be done with it, but but that's a bit of a resource for you. I think there's an awful lot of uh, good material in this. Quite a bit of it is, is culled from other sources, but but on many occasions um, I, I've tried my best to find some, some improvements over existing theory, uh, including in this this one. Um, I think last week I had a bit more, but but some here too. And, and really throughout the series there, there have been uh, quite a few improvements. So I've tried to, uh, to give you a, an overview of the kind of play, some of the key motifs in all of these variations, the key plans. Uh, you know, it's not encyclopedic coverage, but it's a lot. I mean, 34 videos uh, trying to cover the, the full span of the Rue Lopez. You can't get everything, but you can get an awful lot, and uh, I think we've, we've discussed certainly enough to, uh, to give all of you guys a, a good place to start. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Next week, of course, it won't be a Rui Lopez. Although, who knows? I'm, I think I'm going to do a viewer games show next time. So there might be a Rui in there somewhere. But uh, I'm hoping there won't be. Anyway, thank you very much for bearing with me. I appreciate some of the, the kind comments that, that um, many of you have offered. 
and uh, that'll do it. So until next week, take care, wish you the best, and um, thanks again. Bye-bye.